So my name is Ilya. I work in London, a company called Beaveworks, which is started by uh, RabbitMQ co-founders. Perhaps, uh, perhaps some of you are familiar with RabbitMQ. Uh, and uh, we, we've, been, we've been around since 2014. And that's around the time I started working on cloud native tools at Beaveworks, right? We first released a, a network for Docker that, that was really the first network that actually worked out of the box for like, you know, containers running on multiple hosts without having to run containers in the host namespace, et cetera. So uh, that's, that's one of our flagship products. It's called VivNet. It's 2.0 now, 2.1 actually. Um, and um, more recently, we've been contributing to, to Prometheus project and Kubernetes. I wrote tools such as KubeADM, have a few projects of my own. And uh, the contribution that we made towards, uh, to, to the Prometheus project was, um, was, was done by um, uh, Julius Waltz, who may be here, maybe not today. Um, and uh, this is the, the remote write feature and also remote read that allows us to, um, to store data, Prometheus data in, in a cloud service. Right? We, we run a cloud service that, that provides a remote read and remote write endpoints for, for your Prometheus server. It's pretty easy to enable an existing Prometheus file, but um, you could just use our out-of-the-box configuration. So this is, this is just a bit of an intro about myself and the company I work for. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the product just, just, by, just as a means of um, you know, visualizing the data I have in Prometheus and, um, and doing PromQL examples and, and stuff. Uh, Yes, for those who just came in, this is going to be a very introductory talk to Prometheus. I hope you'll find this useful. Uh, and uh, if you expected something more advanced, um, well, feel free to stay. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an app developer-oriented talk, as uh, the title suggests. Uh, and uh, well, I'll just go ahead, right? So, um, I'm an app developer. I build apps, right? That's right. Yeah, I do microservices as, as, as everyone, right? And uh, as I do those things, I run them on Kubernetes. Or I let Kubernetes run them for me, so I don't have to um, worry about silly things anymore. I let Kubernetes run my microservices for me, and that's, that's, that's what most of you do, right? How many of you don't do Kubernetes? Really? Right. We had KubeCon after all. <laughs> um, so I let Kubernetes run my microservices for me. And um, I left this slide uh, blank intentionally. Because this is, this is what it's going to look like if you let Kubernetes run your microservices, but don't put any observability in. <laughs> yeah, you can guess. So observability is pretty essential. And uh, as a developer in the age of microservices, uh, you should embrace observability and, uh, and do your best job towards that and instrument your app with Prometheus metrics. We no longer have to, to try and you know, find a tool that will like, look at the packets or system calls and tell you what the app is doing, right? Why should you do that? You can actually instrument the app. You can actually tell your monitoring system about the business metrics, about any protocol level metrics, any app specific metrics, anything like that. Even my dog likes it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so dog. And the skeptical cat is thinking, oh, why should I instrument my app? Do I really have to do that? Well, perhaps a good question to ask, right? Why? Well, um, I think uh, this, this is mostly to do with uh, microservices being a culture and not to be mistaken with architecture, right? Um, culture, not an architecture. 
you build your app, you run it, team takes responsibility to run the app that they ship. Ops team run infrastructure, developers run their apps. So they can actually put the work in to make it more observable. They can put those Prometheus metrics in just, just to, to make it easier for themselves to run the app, to have decent monitoring in place. If team has taken on call responsibility, they better do that, right? Because otherwise, what, they're going to second guess what's going on? Or, you know, it's them who are running the app now. I think that's kind of one of the, the big culture changes with Prometheus. <laughs> microservices, sorry. Um, it's a big culture change with, with microservices. And Prometheus is um, a, an observability tool that is built for microservices in the day and age of container orchestration. It has native support for Kubernetes and uh, other orchestrators. And it also has support for legacy type systems where you can just uh, write static config file or anything like that. And you can also instrument legacy systems in their entirety through an exporter, right? Say so you have like a set of databases over there, or mainframe system. You can write an exporter for that mainframe system and put that into Prometheus. But it works pretty well and doesn't require any fancy exporters if you're doing microservices and you use Kubernetes and service discovery and such things. And uh, the important aspect of Prometheus is that it's a, it's a pool based system. So um, you don't have to configure your app and tell it like, hey, your monitoring thing is over there. And then, oh, I've got to change that because there is a new monitoring thing. Or what I'm going to do, oh, my client library only supports one at a time. So Prometheus doesn't have that problem at all. And you can run multiple versions, do all sorts of things. You can have like separate teams running their own instances of Prometheus and like an ops team running federated or whatnot. Um, instance of Prometheus, you can have multiples of those, and it has pretty efficient memory usage and, uh, and disk storage and remote storage, which, which uh, we're going to showcase today, and, uh, and all sorts of things like that that allow you, that leave you so much flexibility to how you can run Prometheus. So these are some, some of the key aspects why, why you might want to care about Prometheus. And one other thing I forgot to mention, it's one of these essential features of Prometheus is the, the analytics facility through, through the PromQL query language, which allows you to continuously analyze how well your apps are doing and thereby continuously improve. So how do I instrument my app for Prometheus? It's actually very simple. You just need to implement this metrics endpoint, which uses content type text plane. So nothing really complicated. Oops. Oh. Okay. Metrics endpoint, plain text, easy, right? Can do that in C, perhaps? I wouldn't. Um, and uh, you, you need to write a string value, where we, uh, like key value pair for a line, name of a metric, and a floating point value. And here's one example. Metric new users count, value 250. You could add labels in curly braces like that. And uh, here is an example of this um, new user's count metric broken down to more specific values where we use locale as, as a label. So here's an example of 
set of different metrics that, that a, a metric send point of my app may output. Process uptime seconds, there's a, that's, that's a platform specific metric. Uh, HTTP request duration seconds count, that's a, that's a middleware type metric, your HTTP framework, web app framework, whatever you call that thing. And uh, new users count, that's the sort of business metric. So you can put all of those in. This is a very simplified version. You'd probably have labels all over the place. In a, in a, like, as we will see an example later on. And uh, here's a, a more specific case of a, an HTTP um, middleware metric where, where we have get type requests and put type requests and error codes associated with those. And uh, yeah, this particular app has only seen one of each of those. You can find out more about a few more advanced metric types such as histograms, summaries, and such things on the Prometheus website in the documentation. These things are called metric types and they're kind of like, there are, there are quite a few more advanced topics there. So how do I use the Prometheus to improve my app? As I mentioned, there's this PromQL language, which allows you to query the, the metric data you stored over time, and uh, you can do some pretty advanced queries. I'm still learning myself, so bear with me here. So here's a very simple one. You just say a metric name, and you get all the, all the things there are for process uptime seconds. Easy? OK. Well, that may be not quite useful, you actually want to look at a specific job. And uh, here, Pierre would be looking at my app. And this will, will give me the, the uptime of all instances of my app. For the HTTP stuff, you'd look at HTTP duration seconds count. And uh, you can do something more specific where you'd look at my app method get path URI slash, right? And you can sum those up to, to sort of aggregate all over, all over all of the instances of that uh, my app thing. And uh, you could do other things such as raids. And we'll look at some of this uh, momentarily in, in the tutorial part. And there, there's, there's another nice metric to be aware of is the app metric. This is the metric that Prometheus sets internally when uh, it, it finds a, a given job, so it looks in Kubernetes and it finds a service, and it goes and looks at that at all the pods behind that service, and uh, if it manages to scrape from, from all of those, it stores one in the app metric. If it fails to scrape from, from any of those, perhaps they're not instrumented or something like that, it will store a zero. So you could look at whether, whether all of your, so that essentially indicates the health of your app if the app is instrumented. So if you, if you, if you look at my app like this, you, you'd, you'd tell whether, whether all of instances of your app are healthy and able to report Prometheus metrics at the very least. And you can do a sum over those. This will give you the number of instances actually. So we'll, uh, we'll look at some of this in more detail in the tutorial now. How are we doing with time? Plenty of time. Brilliant. OK. So I have a tutorial uh, where, where I'm going to use um, Node.js app. I'm going to run it on Kubernetes, on GKE. I'm going to use Vive Cloud for Prometheus remote storage. And I'm going to use Vive Cloud Notebook for um, curing the data that I have there. And I'm going to use a tool called Draft uh, for, for deploying uh, the code that, that as, as I make changes to it. So here is a, um, yeah, OK. So I'm going to check out a branch. So I prepared a couple of branches here. I'm not very good at live coding. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, we won't start. Uh, yeah, you can see this. Try tonight. 
uh, mirror display. Okay. Da -da -da. Okay, cool. I probably should zoom in. Um, we let's V zero start. Okay. So. Um, so this what you will see in the readme if you go to that repo. Uh, I'll show the link once again afterwards if anybody didn't capture that. So um, I've done all these steps earlier. So we all prepared. I installed draft. I installed the Vive Cloud add-ons. If I go go to to Vive Cloud now, I can see that, for example, if I if I go to Explore View, I can see that here's my cluster. It's it's got a bunch of things running, including my Node.js demo over here. And the Vive Cortex agent is a Prometheus server that is scraping for, from here. So, um, um, I mean, I could show you more of this if you want um, towards the end if we have time left. Uh, but we can see that, that Vive Cloud agents are connected to this cluster, so we're good to go. And let's check out the first version of the app. Well, uh, let me tell you about this app first, right? So we're launching a pretty awesome API. I'm sure Hacker News readers will be all over it as soon as we launch it. It's called Stringly. It's pretty amazing. It does one thing and does it well. It reverses strings. Very useful, isn't it? So OK, let's look at the code first. Um, So, um, so this this is this is our plain text front front page, and uh, here's our million dollar methods. And um, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's you use a standard library, keeping it super simple, right? So if I run draft up, I should see this running on my Kubernetes cluster now. It takes a little while. I can show you a little bit of Leaf Cloud Explorer, perhaps, in the meantime. So um, what can I do here? Oh, this is a previous version of the thing running right now. So that's kind of not so interesting, I guess. Um, I'm going to narrow it down into my default namespace. There's only one thing that I expect to, to leave there, to see uh, that is expected to be there right now, the Node.js app. OK, well. Ooh, conference Wi-Fi. That's uh, it's always uh, so delightful. Okay, so anyway, the app is ready now. Um, to double check with it, have external IP here. Ooh, conference Wi-Fi. <laughs> Didn't pray the demagogues. <laughs> No. Am I still connected? Hmm. Oh, do I have to ping? Like, oh, not Kubernetes, Prometheus IO today. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm This is great. I don't even have to download anything in this demo. Surely this should work, right? <sighs> yeah. Yep, let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Now we shall pray the demigods. I drop the mic, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, maybe just a few pink packets. Uh, it's working. <laughs> okay. Does Prometheus IO work? That's good. Okay, great. So um, um, we were going to say um, 
you know, Kubecode will get service, Node.js demo, get its um, external IP. Yeah, that's been assigned, that's good. We can, we can save the external IP as a variable so we can use that later. Um, so yeah, let, let's, let's check out Stringly app, right? Can everybody see the console? Yeah, yeah? it's pretty good, okay. I, I could, oh, oh no, that's, that's pretty big, but maybe one bump. Okay, that, that, that'd be okay, I guess. Um, so yeah, Stringly app is like this. It tells me um, what I can do is this, uh, curl. And yeah, it reverses string. That does one thing and does it well. That's great. We love the Unix philosophy, right? Um, so um, yeah, I've done that already. So I'm gonna run Apache Bench as you do, right? You're gonna, like, you find it on Hacker News, you're gonna have fun whether these guys can actually stand. If this app still stands after you're like Apache Bench for a little while. Run it again. All right, it's still running well. Um, but like back, back, uh, back, back, back at the um, startup, at the uh, the coffee shop, we we thinking, well, we're gonna have to, you know, make sure that we can withstand the the hockey stick growth, um, and um, we're gonna we're gonna go and uh, do some more benchmarking, uh, and uh, we we figured, as we like to keep things very simple and minimal, uh, we figured we're gonna. I'm gonna write a little um, load test thing. Well, we're gonna use Apache Bench, and we're gonna we're gonna add this um, hits endpoint, which is um, nothing really clever at all. So we're essentially just gonna have a little counter here for anybody who accesses the API, and we're gonna render that at slash hits, right? Just gonna render that number. So. Um, if I go run draft up again, it's going to remain in foreground. I need to switch to another shell. <laughs> and um, if I um, if I do kubectl get pods, I should see is it the new version? Okay, draft is still building and making the release. Okay, great. So now, now we should see that we have a new pod that is coming up. Brilliant. Okay, so now uh, if we uh, if we just uh, curl uh, slash hits, we can see that that nobody tried to use the app. Yeah. So if I if I do um, no, this is the wrong command. Uh, oh yeah, I have a little script here actually that. Um, uh, that you know, reads that slash hits and stores that in the CSV file that I could potentially plot later. That's uh, that's that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Very very simple uh, load testing uh, framework, as I'd call it. Um, um, yeah, framework without the painting. It's just a frame. Um, it's yeah. Uh, it, we we gonna we're gonna run that. Um, but first, we're gonna run uh, Apache Bench. Um, uh, but I have to actually modify this a bit. Uh, I need to actually pass some payload to it, right? Right. Uh, reverse um, question mark string equals um, hello kubecon, and um, well, let me just. Double check whether this is this even works. So the, I forgot. For the, for the, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Hmm. That's an interesting word. Um, yeah. Okay. And I, I'm just going to double check whether heat endpoint uh, is working. Oh yeah. Cool. Right. So two hits on the API. Um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna run AB three hundred C hundred. And uh, we, we run that, and we open another shell, collect samples here, and um, in the very first one, I'm gonna run Apache Bench, 
a bunch of times. And um, yeah, well, um, yeah, I think this, this is a pretty cool um, thing. I've got this uh, samples file now. I've got like all these numbers here. And uh, as, I, as I'd be looking at it, I'll think, oh well, hold on a moment. Um, is this looking right? Yeah, it does look okay. Okay, how about I scale up my app, right? I go and scale this up, um, and um, kubectl scale deployment. Um, what's it called? Node.js demo replicas two. Okay, just a couple replicas. So kubectl. Um, so I run the Apache Bench again, and I'm going to look at my um, results, um, samples. So now I'm looking here, and uh, OK, that's, oh, this is strange. Why is it, why is it zero here? Yeah, so but like, I, I have no idea, right? My, my, um, my CSV file doesn't, doesn't let me do much. Um, it doesn't scale, does it? Okay, so I, I go on Google and or I go to a conference and find out, like, or meetup, a meetup, you know. I'm, I got to launch it tomorrow. I got to do a local meetup. And I hear about Prometheus, it's a thing. So I, go, I get home and I, I figure, well, I'm, an, I'm a minimalist type person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and um, read the docs about Prometheus and. Um, I, I write this, this version with really basic Prometheus metrics. And, uh, and what do I do here? Well, actually, this, this is all I kind of need to do to do Prometheus metrics, right? So I change from just hits to um, HTTP request total. And um, yeah, that's it. Cool, OK, let's try that. So I still use. I still have draft running here in another shell, so it should deploy this new version. That's cool. And uh, um, kubectl get pods. Yeah, so I got new new pods running. So if I if I call on, uh, I'm just going to copy this from here. Obviously, um, I think I need this. Save the AP address and um, curl um, metrics. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, that works. Um, so now I could um, run Apache Bench a few more times. I think I still have my um, awesome um, collect sample script running. I, I don't need that anymore. It's rubbish. Um, doesn't scale. Um, yeah. So draft is good, and uh, my shell here. Cool, so now I go back to slash metrics, and I can see this, and that's great. But I also have configured Prometheus 2 to store data in Beef Cloud, so I should be able to use um, a pretty UI um, to, to see what's going on. So I can see like some of the systems metric, and that's great, but uh, perhaps I don't care so much about CPU usage right now. Um, it's a very simple app. I shouldn't, shouldn't have to care about that. Oh, great. OK. So um, yeah, so if I um, look at it as a, um, oh, that's, um, that's, that's not just my app. I've got to look at. The Node.js demo, and uh, so these are two instances of my app. I can see that each of them has seen quite a few requests already. I'd rather look at it as a graph. Look, here's here's the hockey stick growth, right? Brilliant. Um, yeah, well, this is kind of cool, but you know, I also want to make sure that. Uh, all the users get pretty decent user experience. So whenever they want to reverse the string, uh, any string, they, they will get um, you know, fairly quick response. We'll, 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 we'll reverse their strings, and we'll do that very fast. That's, you know, that's what, what the, um, the guy who wrote the million dollar method promised. So 
Um, so yeah, okay. Um, well, I thought about it for a while, and I thought, well, actually, you know, there are a few reasons I could actually improve this up a little bit more, and um, and I, I I figured I could use a Prometheus client that integrates uh, with, with one of Node.js uh, web framework uh, like app frameworks for for REST APIs, um, and um, my favorite one is get the minimalist one, the Restify, and I'm using this this Prometheus client here. And, um, and instead of doing all of that stuff by, by hand like I did before, I kind of have nice uh, framework situation going on here, right? So I got like my routes defined pretty clearly. Here's the API route for reverse. Uh, I already have a to-do line here, but that's okay. I, I keep my million dollar algorithm going on here. Where is that? Um, it's here, still the same, I think. I never understood what that line does, but they said it's, it's, it's good. So um, yeah, and I, I don't have to do the metrics manually anymore. And if draft is still running on conference Wi-Fi, that looks good. I should be able to um, see the, the metrics that Prometheus client library has given me. And I don't have this IP address. I need to run this again. And um, yeah, so I should be able to to see all the the metrics that woo a lot cool all right so um, I'm I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all of these like um, I don't really care too much right now I kind of care about the user experience and the HTTP requests right so I'm gonna look at some of these things and uh, I'm going to look for um, oh yeah that looks cool I can I can actually see what 95% of people are seeing, right? So I can, I can go and check um, how well most of my users um, are served. So if I, if I look at this notebook that I saved earlier, probably need to reload that, and uh, I can see here that, oh, hold on, I, I need to deploy a load test. So I'll, I'll stop abusing conference Wi-Fi with uh, Apache Bench and I'm gonna like, Deploy, deploy a, a load test in the cluster, kubectl create f, have a load test uh, deployment here, which is also instrumented with Prometheus. Um, shortly see some, some graph going on over here. Yeah, so my, my load test deployment is up. It's also using Apache Bench, but it runs it in the cluster, I don't care. Um, and, um, and yeah, cool. Well, let's uh, let's look at the um, the graph. I'll keep this as a table over here. It's kind of useful. And I look at it as a graph over here. So I'm gonna do a, an actual sum um, for like yeah. I'm looking at all the GET requests. And uh, actually, I want to look at um, path um, reverse. So I'm gonna add an extra label here, path. Reverse, and um, yeah, right. Cool, is that, does that work? No. Okay. Uh, oh. Is my load test doing the right thing? So, And load test deployment. Is it hitting the reverse URL? Yeah, so it should it should be that. Okay. Um, so that's default Node.js demo stable. Hmm. Somewhat odd. Um, I'm just going to remove all of these labels and look at the. Ah, oh. um, this is a little unexpected. Um, okay, I have to look at other metrics. So one of the things we have in Beef Cloud is that we can actually um, use all the completion. As we don't know what metrics are, we're gonna look at some of the other metrics here. Uh, that's not the one. 
Okay, well, I'm not too sure. So maybe, maybe I have a bug in this code. So let me have a look at the metrics endpoint once again. And the good thing it's like, you know, it doesn't require me to, to know any particular format. It's kind of human readable. And, um, oh, it's not tracking any of the requests on pass reverse. That's odd. Is anything heating that? HTTP, dollar IP, reverse, string, foo, foo, foo. Okay, good. And if I look at the metrics again, am I seeing the reverse ones or not? Okay. Oh dear, have to debug that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not showing now. Uh, I'm gonna just run Apache Benchmarks again from here because I'm getting a little confused over there. So, I got another Apache Bench. Yeah, I'm just gonna run this again, yeah? That should definitely show up, because maybe maybe that, that load test is broken. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Demogod's not loving me today. I think uh, we are close to, to finish, so um, I'll have to go and fix that. Take a look at the repo. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, um, yeah, well, that happens. It's a demo. As we know. Uh, so a few, um, a few more things. So for those who, who want to take a look at the, uh, the demo code, um, take a photo of the URL at the bottom. Um, I'm already developer on GitHub and Twitter. And uh, you could try Aviv Cloud at cloud.viv.works. And uh, feel free to, to email me and join our Slack. We also have a booth. Come by and ask any questions. And do we have time for questions now? We have a, time, we have a little time for, for a few questions, but if, if you guys want to go and join happy hour or whatever is going on, feel free to do so. If anybody has questions, I have a mic over here, or just come over and and talk to me if you if you had a thank you so much